Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity C Sharp Bite Size tutorial. In today's video, we'll be covering inheritance. It's a very common thing in object oriented programming languages just like C Sharp, Java, or Python. This will be a short and simple video on what it is and how to use it. I've got quite a lot of other videos explaining when to use inheritance, when not to use it, and you know, there's lots of debates about that in the community. But of course, before you consider when to use it and when not to use it, you need to actually know how to use it. I hope you're looking forward to it. Let's get started. So for the first part, I'll explain where you've seen inheritance before. So here we have a mono behavior, a normal c -sharp script in Unity, okay? This mono behavior class is inherited from by inheritance example, okay? So by having this colon between your class and another class, it's saying that this class inherits this class. And by inheriting, you get everything that class has. So if we press the F12 key, I can now go look at everything inside a mono behavior. It has all these different functions. It has these two properties, okay? It has a constructor and then it inherits from behavior. Then we go into behavior. Behavior has these properties. Behavior inherits from component. Component has all this stuff, all these methods. And then component inherits from object. Object has all these things. And object doesn't inherit from anything. So this is the like, absolute base class of this inheritance tree. And what that means is right at the top, this inheritance example has all the stuff from object all the way up to mono behavior. It has everything those classes have. And we'll be making an example with our own class and inherited version and showing you a use of it. Okay, let's do an example. So if we make a public class item, okay, this is the bare bones of a class, okay? We've got basically nothing here. We can make a new instance of the class over here. So if we say um, item, item equals new item. So what this means is we're storing an item variable. So a variable of type item called item and then we just set it to a new instance of one. So this currently means nothing because the item class has no data. If, if it had an integer x, so int x equals 10 or 20, sorry, I type 20, then that means when we access it from here, we're going to get 20, right, item.x. Now, currently it's private, so let's make it public, like so, item.x, okay, so we can print that and it'll be 20. So now we've made a new instance of an item and we can do stuff with it. We can say item.x minus equals 10 to subtract 10 from it, okay, and that subtracts it from this instance. So if we stored it up here, so if we said, you know, private item, item, and instead, rather than making a new instance here, we just interact with this one. Okay, let's even make the constructor up here. So what we're saying is when this, you know, instance exists, we have a new item cached, and then in start, we subtract 10 from it, okay? And then anywhere else in our logic, let's say in the update loop down here, we can then, you know, debug.log, the item.x value. And what that's going to do is it's going to, when we start, subtract 10. And then that means it'll be down to 10 because it's gone from 20 down to 10. And it should just log 10 every single frame. If we want to give that a test, we'll go into Unity and press play. And now we're getting 10 logged every frame. Okay, so I've undone a little bit. I've gone back to where we just had a new instance. And down here, we have no data in our item class. Okay, so for our item, let's give it a name. Okay, so we'll make a constructor. And what the constructor will do is this will get called when we make a new instance of the class. So currently it's an empty constructor, but let's say we require a name, okay, string name. That means up here when we make a new instance, we have to give it a name. So let's give it the name book. This item is a book, okay? And down here, we actually want to do something with this name. So let's make it a private string name, okay? And here we say this.name equals name. What that means is, because this name variable and this name variable are the same, they've got the same name, this dot refers to the, the name inside the class, whereas this name just refers to the parameter. Now it's telling us this can be read only because we're never modifying it apart from in the constructor, so we'll go ahead and do that. And now let's do one last thing. We'll make a public void, so this is going to be a function called use, and what happens when we use the item? We'll just say debug.log using, and then the name of the item, so I'm just going to do this. Inside here, we'll say the name variable. So it's going to say using name. So up here, we've called the item book. So if I say item.use, that should call this use method and log the name. If we go back over to Unity, press play, give it a second. Using book. Okay, so that's what you're used to. But now, inheritance. So we have our item class, okay, and it has some logic in the use method to say using name. But what if we want different types of items to do different things when we use them? We actually want to inherit this class. So we have the name and the constructor. We want lots of the logic of our item to be inherited. Just like when we make this class, we get all the mono behavior stuff, like start, update, and you know everything in here, all these different methods, that's all in here. 
in our own class, we want everything that's an item to be in, let's say, weapon or armor or consumable. So if we go down here and we make a new class, call it weapon, and just like we learned earlier with the inheritance here, we'll say inherit item. So right now, weapon is effectively the same as item, but we have to give it a constructor just like we have a constructor here. So let's say public weapon, okay? Now this needs to take in a name, so we actually can set this name. And then this is where you can also take in any extra data a weapon might have. So let's pretend weapons take in a damage number, okay? Let's make this read only as well. We'll take it in here, we'll call it damage, okay? And we'll say this.damage equals damage. But for us to make sure we also set the name like this, we have to do colon base. The base class wants a string name for an item, that's exactly what you see right here. So we'll pass that in here. So we're saying, okay, do the base constructor, and then we also want to store some damage for this instance. So now up here, instead of item, we can actually say weapon, okay? Now weapons obviously need damage as well, so we'll say sword and ten. So we've made a new weapon. Now notice how weapon and item are not the same class, but it allows us to do this because weapons inherit from items. So a weapon is an item, that's why we're allowed to use it here. So when we say use, what we expect is, it actually will use this method here to say using sword. Okay, so let's go back to Unity. Using sword, okay. But we want something different. We want for swords, maybe, oh sorry, for weapons, it should say, you know, swinging sword dealing this much damage okay we want to log something different completely but we still want to keep the same use method okay so if we're, if we're using an item a normal item we do this but if we're using a weapon we do something else so the way we do this is by making this function overridable or rather than the word overridable they use the word virtual so if we say virtual okay this means that we can now override this method and by overriding it it means we you know can give custom logic so what we do is down here we then say public override, and now we have some different methods. These are all in the mono behavior stuff, but then over here we have the use, okay? Now by default, it says base.use, and what that does is it will call the base use function, so it'll do this. But we don't want to do this at all. We want to do our own logic. So let's say debug.log, okay? Swinging, and then let's uh, just add the dollar sign, okay? So we're swinging, and then the name, okay? Now we can't access name, because name is private. To access it in inherited classes, we actually need to make this protected, okay? So now we can use the name. Swinging thingy four, and then we'll say how much damage? Damage, so the damage value, or 10, and then damage, okay? Swinging sword for 10 damage. Now what that means is up here, even though we're calling use on an item, because the item is a weapon and weapon overrides this method, it actually does this instead. If we go back over to Unity, press play, we now have swinging sword for 10 damage, okay? So yeah, that's it for this video. If you want me to cover any other object-oriented programming features, or maybe some C-sharp specific features, or even Unity specific features, let me know down below and I'll be sure to get around to those. But yeah, if you liked the video, then please leave a like and subscribe, it'll help a lot. I'll see you all next time, thanks for watching, and goodbye. But of course, before I go, I've got to thank my patrons, a special thanks to John Selig, Liz Kimber, Drandy, Fabian Reno, Malvin, Zumran, David McDermott, Exit, Josh Folsom, Birdodai, Dustin Miller, Rec, Yoris Letter, Rene, Rory Baldwin, and Jay Donald. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, link to my Patreon is down below. If not, there are also links down below to other social media such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord. If you could help us out by following on any of those or checking any of those out, that'd be greatly appreciated. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.